Amen. Good afternoon. May the Spirit of God bless you and also bless your family. I would like to start this service. Pray on behalf of your house. Stand up, please, if you can. Take in your hands the pictures, the clothes of your family members. Get it in your hands because we are going to ask God to bless your family. Please close your eyes in the name of Jesus. My Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, here we are, Lord, on your altar. Spiritually speak, this person, they are here together with me. And we, my Lord, enter in your presence because we need your guidance. We need your direction. Today, Thursday, Lord, we pray in order for you to save our family, in order for you to bless our house. This is what we ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, save my family. Protect my house with your mighty hand. God, I ask you at this moment, your peace and your joy. your son Jesus Lord I pray on behalf of the family of this person my father this couple that they are fighting every single day my Lord this couple that they are one step to get divorced my Lord I ask you stretch your mighty hands to save the marriage of this person I ask you Lord for you to take away this spirit of confusion whatever that makes this couple to fight to one another I ask you Lord for you to set this family free from this curse from this addiction he asks Lord set this family free from whatever darkness that is there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we cry out on behalf of our family yes mother there where you are pray on behalf of your children asking God to open their eyes in order for them to see God in order for them to see salvation in order for them to be delivered husband pray on behalf of your wife asking God right now to bless your relationship asking God right now to transform your family ah my father the family that prays together stay together and today Thursday we raise up just cry out right now and we ask you Lord bring salvation bring salvation to our family bring peace Lord to our house oh my God the same way that you change it what into wine change this family member ah my God from the altar right now I rebuke whatever curse that is there there where you are dear friend place your hands on top of your head close your eyes because from the altar of God I rebuke right now the spirit of fighting the spirit of confusion whatever witchcraft that was done in order to destroy your marriage he has this unseen enemy that works in the mind of your family member that leads your children to drugs to do drugs I rebuke it right now his spirit of addiction that makes your family member he has to 
spend all his money gambling, smoking, drinking alcohol. We rebuke you who right now there where you are, say with me, people say in the name of Jesus, say all curses that's in my life here yeah. in Jesus' name. Cast out your hands and he say, Get out right now. Raise up your hands to heaven. Lift up the picture. The cloth of your family. With a blessing, I bless your family. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Receive peace. Receive salvation. By faith, their eyes are open. In order for them to see God. In order for them to receive salvation. And whoever believes, say, I believe, say, Amen. Do you believe it, dear friend? I have no doubt that you are blessed in the name of Jesus. If you would like to call us to place the names of your family members inside of the holy oil, you can call us right now. The number that you can see, 389-9880 or 709-8062. You can call because at the end of the service, I'm going to pray on behalf of those names are here inside of the holy oil. And also, I have here this bottle of water where we have been consecrated from Sunday for the reopening of the temple. Soon, we are going to come out from this locking down. We don't know the day yet, but as soon we get into an end of this locking down, we are going to have the reopening of the temple. And that day is going to be a wonderful day. I would like... If you have as well your bottle of water, get it today in your hands. Let us consecrate it. Because I believe inside of the temple, when you drink from your water, God shall quench all the thirst that you have. Our Lord and our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Lord, I ask you for you to consecrate this bottle of water. Sanctify, Lord. For when we have the reopening of the temple, and when this person, they drink from this water, ah, my Lord, the miracles will take place in their lives. Ah, my Father, great things shall come to pass in their lives. We are in this chair of prayer, Lord. And we know, God, that when we get into an end of this locking down, great things will take place on that Sunday, the reopening of the temple. That's why, bless this water and sanctify with your power. And whoever believes, say, I believe, say, Amen. Amen. Do you believe it, dear friend? I'm going to show to you now the second part of the testimony of Leo and Rachel. Yesterday, they were here on the altar together with Pastor Philip. And they, they, they did, they spoke already how bad their lives were. Now we are going to find out the second part, the conclusion of their testimony. Take a look. So friend, you were watching yesterday uh, the testimony of Leo and also Rachel. Both of them, they were telling us how destroyed their lives were. Uh, just for us to, to get to the point of yesterday. So there was a time that when you woke up, you were in a mental hospital. Is that right? Yes, exactly this way. I remember... The chief doctor didn't want to let me to go out of this place. And then my sister had to come to this place to have a conversation with her for them allow me to come out because as I, I don't remember if I mentioned before, but the exams that the doctors was making, the test, nothing was showing the results, nothing was showing anything wrong with me. And then... They didn't understand why I was having this Caesar's attack. And uh, you were telling us yesterday that at the age of 12 yes. was when your, your mother, yes. the mother, the lady who adopted you, yes, uh, she told you that you were found when you were baby, uh, uh, just mm -hmm. born baby, 
Uh, you were found at a sidewalk. Yes, pass. Yes, true. Mm -hmm. And she told me uh, I was found there. The police officer me found me there, and I'm in shock. At the age of 12, when you found out, you were shocked. Yes, because I, I never realized that. I never realized that because the father that is adopt, adopt me is a, a good family. My mother, my, my father give me a, a love and I never know I, I have this history. And as you know, Pastor, you, I'm not, there is a, this name. My name was the other one. The other so one. your name was not Rachel no, at first. No. You had a different name. Yes. So when the officers they found you on the sidewalk the children's care service took you to this home yes and uh, uh your family your actual family now came to adopt you and your mother waited 12 years to tell you yeah. what happened yes because before that uh, i was a child uh, always ask uh, i'm born from you my mother said no we together, we have a history. And sooner or later, I'm going to talk about it. But now is not the time. And when I was 12 years old, and she told me, oh, you, you found in the sidewalk, and I went to the children's home, and I adopted to you. So, friend, you see, as we were saying yesterday, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I do believe that both Leo and also Rachel, today they have a brand new life. Many times you look at people, you see, they dress nice, but you don't know their background. You don't know the history of their lives. You don't know the past. When people look at them today, they don't see, so I know you guys a long time. I have never seen signs of depression, signs of revoltness, signs of rebelliousness, and as such. But why? Because when we take a decision to give our lives to God, we become a new creature. You have a past, you have a history. You also have a past. So after your mother told you that, when she put everything on the table, what passed on your mind? You were 12. I'm, I'm in shock, as I told you before. And let me think about, and if this family don't adopt, uh, where are you to be today? Because you know the world, yes, Pastor? And there is many, many children, as me, today is a prostitute, today is a gangster, today is not alive. Because you don't have this opportunity that I have with this family, with me. And I give thanks to God because this family I come to church, usually come to church. And I give thanks to God, but inside of me, many questions. How my biological mother has done it with me. And thank God I, ha I have God with me. And then I knew God before. And I'm sick and my mother sit with me and I said, I love you. You have a family to love you too. But if you... So, if your biological mother, when you raise those questions, how could your biological mother have done that to you? You raised those questions and your adopted mom and dad told you that they loved you. Yes, I loved you. See the family that you have today. See the, the, the life that you have today. Because the, my, my family is a there is a good condition. And thank you, Jesus, no, don't like not to me. And, but I'm feeling sad, Pastor. Because even though I have Jesus, but I'm feeling sad because why? I'm, I'm, the question is why? And this question is why she have done that with me? And the things pass. I think it take one week, the questions in my mind. Because I'm not... I'm not a young, I'm a teen, pretty teen. And I have this question to me, and I'm sick of God, and I start to pray for my mother. And I remember when, the, when the, there is a, a family prayer, and, and I ask God, God, please visit my mother where they are, and bless her. And I start to pray for her. 
I will start to perform because my mother, my, my adopted mother, teach me this, eat you for me. So your adopted mother taught you to pray for your biological mother that had left you on the street. Yeah, because she said, I want to know, I know, I want to know her because the first thing is uh, if, if I meet her, I'm going to hug you and I'm going to ask it. As give her thank you because I have you. Because if she don't, don't have you, today I'm not meet you. So friend, you see, this was her life. That was what she went through in life. And perhaps you have been raising questions as well. Why he did that to me? Why she did that to me? Why he had left me? Why she had left me? She could be revolted now. She could be upset now. She could have turned into someone else. Into somebody else. But yet, God through her adopted family. God through the family that found her. That got her. That raised her. Saved her. Her own, her own biological mother left her. But the adopted mother taught her how to pray for the mother and father that she never knew. And uh, what about you, Liu? When, when did your life turn around? Pastor, my life turned around when I came to church. And then, as I said, I have a suicidal thoughts, depression, and all those kind of things. But here in church... I heard about Jesus Christ. He was the one that could fill this void that was inside of me, this deep sadness. And then I started to seek him, to fight for my new birth. I heard about the Holy Spirit, and then I put all my strength, I fought with all my strength to receive this new birth, to, to have my encounter with Jesus. And then it happened. And when it happened, it, it changed inside. When it, the transformation that happened inside, inside of me, when it was transformed, my life outside was transformed as well. Though right in that moment, I was still, I was still jobless. I was still taking tablets in for a while. And uh, what have you lost to that sickness? Due to the mental issues that you had, seizures and also uh, uh, problems, what did you lose to, to that problem? So, as I was saying in the, the, the day before in the testimony, that the dreams of my father, my dreams was to be a doctor, and uh, I was working in the, the, our national bank, and the company was invest in me, and then they were doing everything, investing money, uh, sending me to school, good schools to learn. We are talking English, but uh, as you know, we are Brazilian. And uh, they trying to, to there in Brazil, they paid a, a course for me to learn how to talk in English. How to speak English. How to speak English. And then, if, unfortunately, I could not remain in the school learning English there in Brazil but I lost my job and that job was given to my house to my mother a, a good support and because of this I get I got myself in debt the companies was calling myself always calling me to pay and I could not pay and always when the cell phone in my house was ring I knew that was the companies calling me to charge me the money that I had to pay. So every time your phone rang, the bailiff <laughs> was trying to collect the money that you were owing. And I knew, and because of this, I, I don't want to answer the phone. My, my mother used to call me, Liu, this, this is for you. I said, Mommy, I'm not home. Tell them that, that I'm not home. I will not answer them, I'm not home. But inside of my mind was this thought. I am tired to be the black sheep of the family. I became a heavy burden for them to care. I will not be with myself no more. I will kill my life. Uh, yesterday, you were telling me that you, um, you did also course for the Brazilian Navy. 
you did a few other courses, and because of this health issue, they could not approve you. I could not be there, nothing, in none of them, because, as I was saying, the, the company, they invested me a lot, and the, that was my dream, to work in Navy. And then, when I saw my dreams falling apart, Pastor, there is no reason for me to remain alive. And because of the other issues, my father became unable to buy the medications. And then I was seeing my father, he is the, the, the head of the house, like a defeated. My father, not because he was defeated, but he was feeling defeated. And it was because of me. It was because of me. Imagine what you was... took that blame upon yourself, yes, right? Yes, this was upon me. And and how are you today? How is your life today? Today I'm completely different. Today I became a new man. I have a new life. This deepness side that I had inside of me it went away. Today I have the Holy Spirit. Today I'm, I have joy, happiness. Today I found that beautiful wife <laughs> right here beside of me. So I give thanks to God because of the adopted family that uh, care of her to me, for me. And today, Pastor, what I can say to them is this. I only could find my happiness when I gave my life to Jesus. And I advise those who are watching us now, if you want to be happy, give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So friend, you see two lives, two different stories. So he had seizures, uh, one side of the family was successful, the other side of the family wasn't. He had so many problems, suicidal thoughts, you name it, he had it. Once he found himself into the mental hospital, but look at his life today. And also Rachel, she was found on the sidewalk at the age of 12, her adopted family told her where she really came from. Yet, when you look to them today, you see two blessed people. If God had done to so many, he also can do for you. And uh, uh, today you are pastor. Pastor Leo, where is the church that you are based here in Trinidad? In Tunapuna, Eastern Main Road, Tunapuna, the corner Morton Street, upstairs, Bugamax. So friends, Pastor Leo and also his wife, they are there on our branch in Tunapuna. We are actually on the lockdown, but as the lockdown will pass, you can come to meet them and they are going to be there every day to pray for you after the lockdown. Back to you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Philip. Did you see, dear friend, how God have been blessed this couple? If there was a solution for them, there is a solution for you as well. Pastor Leo and Rachel, they are married. They are well, well married. They are happy in their relationship. And the same thing God's going to do in your life. That's the reason why you need to pay close attention in everything that we are going to do here today in order to bless your lovely life. The blessing that Leo he has in his life and Rachel she has in her life God is going to perform. God's going to do the same thing in your life. If you have your Bible, please get your Bible open in the book of Genesis chapter 25. Open there. Genesis chapter 25. Have us hear me now. Heaven hear me now. I'm lost without your cause After giving it my own Winter storms have come When dark came my son After all that I've been through Who on earth can I turn to? I look to you, I look to you, yeah, after all my strength is gone, in you I came strong, 
Ай, лучше Holy Spirit, my Lord, give it to us your wisdom, your direction, in order for this person that is single, and also more this person that they are in a relationship, they are dating someone, or they are already married, in order for day to day, Lord, receive this blessing in their lovely life. Ah, oh, my God, renew their relationship. I already ask you, bring the joy, the happiness back to this couple. Give it to us your word, Lord. This is what I ask you. And whoever believes, say amen. Amen. Today, we are going to talk about two persons, Jacob and also his brother Esau, to vision. The vision of one of them you have in your life. If you have the vision of Esau, I'm going to teach you what you have to do in order for you to change your vision. If you have the vision of Jacob, what you need to do to keep it. Because the same way that God blessed Jacob, God even changed his name. He's going to do the same for you. This name that you may have, that for many people is a, is a name that many people, they see that's not a blessed name. Maybe because you were married but you got divorced. Maybe because you have children, but they have been giving to you a lot of trouble. Maybe, you know, your name up to now, it's not a blessed name, but it should be. But first, let us talk about here the vision of Esau. The Bible says here in the book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 31. Look what took place here. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of these days. And he also said, Look, I am about to die. So, what is this birthright to me? <laughs> that the birthright was a blessing. That his father Isaac inherit from Abraham. And God already promised to Abraham to bless his descendants. To prosper. To be with them wherever they go. And Isaac, as he was the firstborn, he was supposed to inherit that blessing. But don't know what he did. He despised it. He was so hungry, as you said, as we saw here. He said, I am about to die, for sure. He was very hungry. And Jacob, because he had the vision of a blessing, he told his brother, sell me, sell me your birthright. Give to me this blessing. And the <laughs> answer, he didn't care. Uh, what, what does both rights mean to me? Another word, take it. You see that the vision, the vision of answer was an instinctive vision. It's that kind of vision for that moment. A, 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 a person, when a person, they have this instinctive vision. They are guided by what they feel. And 
decided to evaluate only what they want at the moment. It's like that person that they are in the church and they just want to get married just to leave the house of the parents. Just because they don't want to stay by their parents anymore, they, they think that to get married or to find someone is going to be the better way for them to come out of their parents' house. And because of that, many people that they get married only because of that, only because of that moment, they end up bringing problems to their life later on. How many people perhaps you saw already be being in the church because friends they were making joking about her or about him or you are getting older and up to now you didn't get married yet. Or your sister, she's younger than you and she has already a family, she, she has already a husband and you are get older and you are stay behind. How many people, because of those jokes, they end up in take the first one. Sometimes even an unbeliever, even a person that they don't know, you know, the character of that person. They, 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 they get married only in order for people don't make jokes about them. And after a while, they bring into their lives a lot of problems. One of, one of our pastors, some years ago, overseas, he was saying, a lady actually, she was giving a testimony in the church. She got married only because she had a pity on her boyfriend. Those days was her boyfriend. She had a pity on him. And she got married with him. And after they had a child together. And after seven years, she came to the pastor and said, Pastor, I don't have, I don't have feelings for him anymore. I look to him as he is a brother for me. And unfortunately, that couple, they had a lot of problems, but through Coming by the love of therapy, using their faith, God could be able to restore their relationship. But at the beginning, she got married because she had pity on, on, her, that, on that day on her friend. That became her husband later on. There are many people that they, they get married only to have an intimate life. Only because they want to have someone for they to sleep together. But listen, this kind of vision is what brings a lot of problems in many people's relationship in our day. They are get married not with the, the vision of being blessed to serve God as we spoke last week. For they to help one another in their relationship with God. But they are get married only because of what they see at that moment. That was the vision of Esau. You cannot accept to have this vision. And the Bible says here in the book of Genesis. Go there. Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28, verse 5. Let us read. Let us read what's taking place here. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to pay them Aram to Laban, the son of Bethuel in Syria, the brother of Rebekah the mother of Jacob and Esau. Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and he sent him away to pardon Aram to take himself a wife from there. 
And in that he blessed him. And he gave him a charge say, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. And in that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother. And he had gone to pay the Aaron. And also, also saw that the daughters of Canaan did not please his father Isaac. So Esau went to Ishmael. And he took Mahalatav, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, and the sister of Neboj to his wife, in addition to the wives he had. You see here that Isaac, he told Jacob, do not take the wives from Canaan. Those women, they were not good. And Jacob, he obeyed the voice of his father. Do you know why? Because Jacob, he had the vision of the future. He had the vision of the blessing. His eyes was upon the blessing. And this is exactly what you need to have. Your eyes must be upon the blessing. Your eyes must be upon the altar. Because when you obey the direction that comes from the altar, it is impossible for you to fail in your love life. When you obey the direction that comes here from the word of God, you are going to be happy in your love life. You are going to be, you know, completely in all of life. You see that Jacob, he was blessed. He faced injustice, yes. He went to the wilderness, yes. He slept with his head on a stone, yes. But God, he was there with him. Because he obeyed. He obeyed even his father. But you see, look at Esau. He saw that the, the, the women of Canaan wasn't pleased to the eyes of his father. And to provoke his father, he went there and he took them to be his wives. And after he had so many problems. After he even came to his father Isaac begging him. Is there any blessing for me? The Bible said from the, mouth, from the mouth of the prophet Malachi that Jacob, God, he, he was, you know, happy with Jacob. But Esau made God to be angry about him. And Elisa, when you have the vision of Jacob, you that you are single, you wait the right time. You are not desperate. You are not, you know, in a, in a hurry to get someone you trust in God. You, wife, when you have the vision of Jacob, today, okay, maybe your husband here, He's not in the presence of God. Maybe your children, they are not in the presence of God. But your vision is in the future. Tomorrow, my son is going to be a man of God. Tomorrow, my daughter, she's going to be a woman of God. My family is going to serve the Lord. And when you have this vision, you pray, you fight, you don't give up, you trust in God. When you have the vision of Jacob, lady, you don't complain. You don't, you know, enter in an argument, in a quarrel with your husband for nothing. He came in from, from his work, he upset. Sometimes he do things that you, doesn't, that you don't like. You trust in God. You pray for him. You have good eyes for him. Do not accept to be deceived by the circumstance that's around you. Do not allow the devil to deceive you in what you see. Ah, pastor, but sometimes, you know, my house looks like a, a battlefield. They fight against one another. Trust in God. Depend on God. Put your family on the altar. 
Make it false on their behalf. Keep believing. And God, he will bless you. Jacob, he was blessed by God. God even changed his name because he obeyed. If you keep yourself in this, in this chain of prayer, if you keep fight, believe, trust in God, ah, my friend, you are going to see great things taking place in your life. You that you are single and also you that you are married. I would like to do a prayer for you. Perhaps you say, Pastor, fortunately, I have the vision of Esso. I want things quickly. I want to see a change in my partner quickly. I want everything quickly. I don't like to wait. You need to change your vision. Ah, Pastor, I commit so many mistakes in the past. I don't want to commit those mistakes again. Because in the past, you had the vision of of Esau, but when you have the vision of Jacob, the vision of Israel, you are going to please God, and God is going to bless you. Please, if you can, stand up the way you are. Place your hands over your eyes, like the one that I'm doing here. Yes. Repeat after me. Say, my Lord. Say, my Father. Change my vision. Change the way that I see my family, my problems, my love life. Say, my father, I want to have your vision, your direction. Say, my father, I want to look to you. I want to trust in you. I want to keep my faith in you. Talk to God right now. If you realize that you have the vision of Jacob. If you realize that you have the vision of Jacob. Can't tell me God, my father, I want you keeping this faith. I want you keeping believing. I want you keeping looking upon the bless. But friends, if you unfortunately, you have a sort of vision. Ask God to change the way that you see things. Perhaps you are single and you are in a hurry to get married. It's not because you want to, to please God. It's not because you want to, to have a family that's going to glorify the name of God. But because of what the people say, but because of what you heard from your families, from your friends, the jokes, say to God to change your vision. Say, no, Lord, I want to have the vision of the blessed. I want to look to the blessed. Talk to God right now. Oh, Holy Spirit, I ask you. Help this person, help this person, Lord, to see you, to see the old, to trust in you, to surrender their lives to you. Then, why you are, dear friend, surrender your life to God. Say to him, I want to be a man of God, I want to be a woman of God, I want to trust in you, oh Lord, oh Holy Spirit. Receive our life. Receive the life of this person who right now. Receive the Holy Spirit, our heart, our soul. All that we have, Father, we surrender on your altar. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I need you more. I need you more. More than yesterday.
more than your next heart He had in the answer he was supposed to have, but he despised. But the Jacob, through Isaac, he received it because he had a spiritual vision. His eyes was upon the blessed. Ah, my friend, when you have a spiritual vision, when you are not moved by the circumstance or what by you see, what God He did in Jacob, He do in your life. Receive now the blessing of the God. Receive now the blessing of the God in all of your life. Receive now his guidance, his direction from the altar of God. I bless your love life, husband. If you have your wife, embrace your wife, embrace your husband, wife, the way you are, and you tell your husband that you love him. Tell your wife that you love her. Oh, Holy Spirit, I ask you, renew the love. Renew, Lord, the communion, the relationship. Bless this couple. Let this couple, Lord, with their love life to glorify your name. Father, I pray on behalf of this couple. If they were upset against one another, ah, oh, my Lord, remove it away. And bring your peace. Bless their relationship. And also, Lord, I ask you, bless the singles ones. Help him to find the right person. Bless their love life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. His blessing. If you believe, he say, my Lord, I surrender my love life, my family into your mighty hands. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore. If you believe, he say, I believe, say, Amen. If you have your wife there with you, you can give her a kiss. Kiss your wife. Kiss your husband. Don't be shy. If you are single, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
in the right moment, God is going to bless you and you can give it to your girlfriend, to your, to your partner. In the future, look, the vision of Jacob, you can give it to them a kiss. Not one, but a thousand. Amen. I'm going to do the last prayer. Have a seat, please. Before I do hear the last prayer, let me remind all of you that tonight at 9 p.m., we are going to be here on the altar praying for the nation and also praying for you. We are in this channel of prayer. We are waiting the lockdown to get into an end for us to have the reopening of the temple. And there, we are going to drink from the water that we blessed at the beginning of the service. Before I do the last prayer, look what the Bible says here in the book of Psalms 128. It says here, Blessed is, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. What does it mean, walks in His ways? Obedience. Jacob, he obeyed. He obeyed not only his father, but above all, God. And that's why God blessed him. When do you prove, when you show to God your obedience, is when you decide to return to God what belongs to him. Is when you are a faithful tither. Is when you put God first in your life. You are walking in God's ways. You are faithful. And during this pandemic, during this crisis that we have been going through, this is the best moment that you should prove that you are faithful to God. But pastor, things getting hard. Things get worse in day by day. But look what God says here. Look what God continues to say. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy. And it shall be well with you. In other words, you are going to have. You are going, always you are going to have something. God will not let you down. God will not will allow you to lack anything because you are faithful to him. You consider him. You obey his voice. You see that during the moment of crisis, those who are faithful to God, ah, my friend, God blessed them. Do you remember David? In a moment that Goliath, he was insulting the people of God. David, he was faithful to God, and David put Goliath down. And the name of God was glorified through David. In a moment of crisis, those who have been faithful to God, they will always have something positive to say. But when a person, they are not faithful to God, they are going to complain. They are going to complain against the country. They are going to complain against the prime minister. They are going to say all kinds of things. But you that you are faithful to God, he will keep you. He will protect you. He will guide you. You are going to, to give back to God your tithe. When, Pastor Junior, when can I give back my tithe? The doors of the universal church are open. You can pass it by, you can place your tithe on the altar, or you can do it through this account name that you can see here. Can you see here? The account name. Can you see that? In the account number. And for sure, God he will bless you. I'm going to do the last prayer right now. And also I'm going to pray for those of you that you are a faithful tithe. And also you that you are a sponsor from the house of God. Stand up please, all of you. Let us say this last prayer. Close your eyes. My Lord, in the name of your son Jesus. I ask you, Father, for you to bless the faithful tithers of your house. Ah, my Lord, those who will obey your voice. Those who will walk before you through their tithe, through their offering. My Lord, in this moment of crisis, they are going to have something positive to say. Ah, my Lord, their, their table will not be empty. No, my Lord, they are going to see great things come to pass in their lives. 
Ona de afeife. Prospa dem. Ele blesse dem. And also, Lord, I bless those who sent their names to be placed in the holy oil. Bless them, Lord. Bless their lives, whatever they are. Holy Spirit, I surrender this service into your mighty hands. And I ask you, Lord, bless any guy in this person. And whoever believes, say, I believe, say, Amen. Amen, dear friend. I have no doubts that you are blessed. Don't forget, tomorrow, Friday, we are going to be here to bless your life at 8.30 in the morning, also 1 p.m. with our program, Hour of Miracles, and then at 5 p.m., Pastor Marcos and also Pastor Philip, they are going to be determining your blessing. Amen? May the Spirit of the living God bless you. Have yourself a blessed and a good night. God bless you.